Well, George, it's been a little bit, hasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, when was our when was our last podcast? I think I think around. I don't know if it was the beginning of the year or around the holidays. Yeah. But it's it's been a little bit. I you know I. Um, I think it's it's hard for us like during the seasons because we get into shooting lots and, yeah. and and doing all of that stuff. Um, I had some health issues that sort of stopped us from doing this in between seasons, um, but I'm all good now. Cool. So that's you know knock on wood. Um, and uh, but I think actually the timing is good yeah. for us to get back into doing this because uh, you know we. Uh, just got off tour. Yeah, yeah. Basically, literally, um, yeah. Like literally going out um, at the beginning of tour, middle of tour, and at the end, um, and talking to so many great people yeah. along the way. And I think hopefully we'll be able to get a bunch of them here to have conversations yeah. with us on yeah. the podcast. And uh, I know, like for me, it got a little bit busy there too. I was finishing up my regular career and what I did. Yeah, congrats on oh, on retirement. Thanks. On retirement. You know, for those that don't know, I was 27 years in law enforcement and finally decided to pull the plug and just hang out and drum line lots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, uh, luckily my wife, you know, God bless you, Joanne. You know, she's very patient and she lets me go. Don't look up at the sky. People are going to think she's going <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> I'm looking because she's like at work. I mean, let me look towards her work, but yeah, no, she's, she's cool. And you know, she, she gets it cause she was in color guard and that's what, where we met like in college, mm -hmm. but without her support, you know, I couldn't be able to go out and go film lots in the middle of nowhere. So, Absolutely. yeah. So like you said, we just, we spent about three weeks on the road this summer. You mm -hmm. know, we've got to see some, the early, the middle and the end and, you know, wow, what, what a season. Yeah. And, yeah. and, um, thank you to everybody that, you know, allowed us not, you know, not just sort of embraced us being in the lot with them, but, but allowed us to come out to rehearsals and, and things like that. Um, we love seeing all phases of the process, not just the finished product. Um, and it's just, Honestly, I mean, especially for me who, you know, I was recovering from, from surgery and in kind of bad shape at the beginning of, of the season. Um, I will say that being around everybody was really, it really helped me. Yeah. I, in fact, I could tell, like, when I picked you up, I was like a little nervous. I literally, when, when, when Rob picked me up from the airport at the beginning of the season, like when we first went out, I probably hadn't spoken out loud to somebody in about a month. Like, that's what I had been going through. Um, so it definitely, it meant a lot. And thank you to everybody that came up to us, you know, randomly yeah. in the lots whenever they saw us and, and, and said hi to us. We appreciate every single one of those conversations. Yeah. I could tell like the best medicine for you was like, after I picked you up and I was like nervous, but the second you got in front of a drum on your leg. Yeah. But you know, I forgot about, came back I forgot about the pain, you know? yeah. forgot about everything else. Yeah. And you were like right back at it and it's like, man, do you even have surgery? Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it was a really great season. You know, um, I think. We saw some groups take a take a nice step forward, um, and you know one thing I wanted to talk about before we bring our guest in just really quickly is um, so we're we're filming this this episode right after the season ended season ended a couple of weeks ago, um, and um, it's a little bit of a double edged sword because um, we found out who won we found out who won percussion we found out all of that stuff um, and. The other side of that is that staffs are making a bunch of changes. There's a lot of rumors flying around. And the the only thing that I will say, and maybe it'll fall on deaf ears because the people who really need to hear this aren't going to listen to it anyway. Um, but let's try, let's try to be a little more sensitive and a little more human with each other when we're talking about these things. 100%. Um, you know, I, I know it's, it's sort of fun to say, oh, so-and-so got fired. See, I was right about this or that. Um, but also realize that um, the performers get impacted a lot by changes that happen. Um, and, uh, and also, we're all people doing this. And, um, you know, people's lively livelihoods are impacted. This isn't just, you know, what you think should or shouldn't happen with regards to, like, design or process or anything like that when it comes to this activity. Um, it's people's lives we're talking about. So I, just, I just wanted to say that. We're fortunate enough today mm -hmm. to have someone with us. Somebody that we've seen on the road. Yeah. And 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 super excited about um, having a conversation with. Very cool person. He hooked me up with, gives me like some good spots there to film from. So. Yeah, in some tough lots, in some lots that are usually pretty cramped. In some very tough lots. And, you know, I'm very, uh, 
you know, thankful that I get, you know, mm-hmm. that he hooks me up. But not only that, not only is he involved in the drum corps world, but he's also very much so involved in the uh, winter drum line world. Oh, as yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead, George. Um, you know, I think anybody who has literally seen Rhythm X over the past 20 plus years is going to recognize our guest. Um, he was a performer there. He's been on staff there since he aged out. Um, I think he's, you know, he's currently battery caption head designer um, at Rhythm X. And he is also a uh, caption head and arranger now for Cavaliers. He's been there the past, you know, several years. Um, let's welcome Josh Bricky. Welcome to the, the shop, Josh. To the podcast. Thank you. Thanks, fellas. Hey, so, uh, so it's been quite a season, you know, we're here after the 2024 season, you know, uh, congratulations on making it through the season and, and, oh, the, you know, you guys are definitely drumming for sure. And congrats. And by the way, also congratulations on the success you guys had in 2023. Yes. That is, you know, that is no small feat, um, you know, uh, you know, winning the, uh, the Sanford award and stuff like that. So, um, we can probably get into what that was like and how that happened and how that all came together. Um, but, uh, you know, we, you know, this is our first conversation with you. So we wanted to say congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. So, uh, how long have, have you been with the Cavaliers? What's it, what season is this for you? Uh, my first year there was 2020 technically. Um, but we all know how that ended. Uh, so I've been there since 2020. Um, did the, the next year, the COVID, like that truncated season. And then um, starting in 22, became caption head. Um, been there doing that ever since. Oh, okay. Where were you at before Cavaliers? Uh, I was with the Crossman uh, from 2015 to 2018. I was caption head there. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah. And then before that, I was at uh, Crown and then started my teaching career at Blue Coats. That's cool. And uh, now that the season's over, are you ready to transition into that uh, to winter drumline full time? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> trying trying to catch my breath a little bit, but um, yeah, excited. You know, we've you know the winter season, just like drum corps, it doesn't really never a hundred percent stops. Um, so, yeah. like at Rhythm X, especially, we do a lot of uh, meetings in the off season. We had our first meeting. It was I think it was a week and a half, maybe two weeks after. WGI championships last year, um, jumped right back in. So we've been meeting throughout the, throughout the, the summer and we had a long, like about two day meeting last week, uh, finalizing some show stuff and get the ball rolling for the, for the winter. Are you a, are you part of that design process there? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we have, we have a, um, kind of a small design team, but, um, you know, a lot of us at Rhythm X, I think, Rhythm X is really unique in that a lot of us have been there for a long time. Uh, me and Andrew and Tim, especially, we've, we've all been over there over 20 years. Um, all marched there and they immediately started teaching. Yeah, and you and Tim marched together, right? Yeah. Uh, all four years that I was at Rhythm X, he marched. And he was there one year before me and one year after me. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, Josh, I'm... Um... I don't know if you know this, but Rob certainly knows this. And I think other, other, I've told this to other people on staff. I pick Rhythm X every year to win because it's, been, <laughs> cause it's been too long. I'm tired of you guys getting second. I'm, uh, sure, you guys, I'm sure you guys are too. It's, it's hard, man. <laughs> well, I mean, and, and it is, and it is something that we can actually get into like the nuts and bolts of like, what is the difference between like, you know, like knocking on the door, almost getting there. And what's the di- what, how does it, what is the difference between that and actually like, oh, we won, you know? It's, it's tough. Well, I mean, uh, it's tough because everybody's so good now. Yeah. I mean, I mean you, you can't have any weaknesses. You know, if, if, if you fuzz out the snare break, you don't win. If uh, you miss a couple dots, you don't win. Right. If something happens electronically, you know, or, or whatever. <laughs> Winning used to be easier. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you were allowed to have a couple weaknesses, but now you I mean you, you look at the top five. Yeah. I mean, th- 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 it's just really, really tough. So we've, we're very lucky that we've gotten very close. Um, but man, it's just, I was going to say, you got to think about it. Like groups like rhythm X pulse RCC, 
Broken, Broken City, City, MCM, you guys have made the activity popular. I mean, look at how many groups there are now compared to, what, 10 years ago or so? Yeah. 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 I mean, it's tough. It's it's brutal. I mean, in, in, in all the good ways. I mean, we, we, you know, I've never been a person that shies away from competition. So I watch all the videos and, um, you know, I want to know everybody I'm going up against and, and they all do everything really, really well. So, you know, that makes you get you a little fired up to go to the next rehearsal weekend and, you know, try to chip away at it and just get a little bit better. I mean, and, and, and that can be that can be said about outdoor, too. Yes. I think there's something specifically about the percussion caption, both indoors. I mean, indoors obviously is only percussion, but outdoors as well, where that top six is brutal. You know, top six, top six or seven groups. Um, All it takes is a little bit, little bit of gray, and that knocks you down. A yeah, or slots, staging, you know? staging, staging, design integration, like you know, all of that stuff. Um, it's a, uh, you know, I think people would. The funny thing is, is like I joked this year um, that like if Vanguard won, Boston people would be mad. Yeah. If Boston won, Vanguard people would be mad. You know. And then, and but then also like, what about blue coats? What about blue devils? What about you know? Cavaliers? What about Cavaliers? Yeah. Um, and I think on the whole, as an audience, we benefit from that because, you know, great percussion, like give me more, you know, that would just, just, I can't get enough of that. Um, but the, uh, the competitive side and the sort of like trying to figure out how to solve that puzzle for any given season you know, I know um, can be a real grind, Yeah. you know, and it's easier some years than others. And isn't it amazing? Like if lines are, if they drum are like right at the same level, the difference is the design. Yeah. yeah. Let, I mean, like I said, whatever the judges say, it almost like, pe like I said, people would argue regardless, you know, it's not necessarily going to change what people think. Yeah. Certain people are going to feel validated. Others are going to feel wrong. You just go, go look at the YouTube comments. <laughs> right. <laughs> Boy, that's a world. Oh, right. You, YouTube comments. Do you watch any of that stuff and read any of that stuff at all? Uh, people will send me screenshots. I, I, I learned a long time ago that you have to kind of stay away from that stuff because you're just going to walk away feeling pretty bad about everything you're doing. Because um, you, yeah, you can't keep everybody happy. Just so you know, you guys don't drum any hard stuff at all. It's all easy high school right. beats. <laughs> high school beats. I can't believe like that's. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, I trip out when I read that. I'm like, I roll my eyes. Sometimes I'll screenshot and I'll send stuff to George too. And I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, I can't believe People it. People have a lot of opinions, but you know, the, the, the thing that those opinions don't have is one of these. Oh yeah. 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 So they, you know, they, <laughs> you know, opinions on YouTube and like high school books and this and that, like the, the armchair quarterbacks, they've never really, they've never done it. They don't know what a, a summer's like and, you know, sleeping on the gym floor and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. I call them the armchair judges, you know, they want to, you know, for, through the, through the, the flow marching stream, you know, wherever their mics are placed. But yeah, like you said, it, it it's hard. And then sometimes I want to tell these people, you know, Hey, well, let's see some videos of, of your, of your line, you know, come audition. Love to see you. The other thing that I really, that I like to point out because we obviously, we fuel that a little bit because we make videos, right? Um, I am so quick to say our videos do not sound like what it sounds like in person, especially like Rhythm X and Cavaliers. Yeah. I even, I, I remember I had a conversation with, um, I filmed Cavaliers in like Rockford, like a very early season this year. And Russell was with the group and, and I was talking to him and I'm like, I'm like, it is impossible for me. I was talking to him about how great it sounded, you know? Um, and I was lamenting, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make my video sound like that. And I wish I could. So what I, what I often tell people is that any lot videos you see are just an invitation to come check it out for yourself live and witness what it sounds like, what it actually sounds like, what it feels like to be there, you know? And even the lot, I mean, the lot is great. It's super entertaining, but that, that's still not real life. You know, it's still, it's still not the emotions of being in the performance, especially in WGI. I mean, the, the lots are super entertaining, but you know, at Rhythm X, like we don't, we don't put a lot of energy into preparing for the lot. 
Uh, and a lot of that is just because we live in, oh, in the Midwest. And for 99% of our shows, there's snow on the ground. Um, and so our warm-up times is a 22-minute warm-up window in a band room. So we don't have the, you know, the hour and a half long warm-up sequences. I mean, you'd, you'd freeze outside. So we only, we only get to do the full lot experiences at probably the last three shows of the year, and that's about it. Um, so, and, and we use that as strictly just get our minds and hands right for the show. But if you really want to see the real thing, you got to go inside. You got to see and, and experience the emotions. And, and there's nothing that matches. The drum corps is the same way. The lot is fun. It's still not, you know, the horn line behind you. And, and the other thing that the YouTube commenters need to really remember is that there, there is a front ensemble. Um, and so, like, we're not basing everything off of YouTube comments. I'm guilty of, like, sometimes forgetting about that. Sorry, sorry for an ensemble. I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to be better, you know. Well, I mean, we don't make it easy on you guys by being in two different zones, you know. But, but you know, what's interesting is that um, I feel like, and I don't know, if Josh, if, if you feel this, but I, I probably first really noticed this last season when, when Cavaliers won, was that um, judging, you know, not to say that it, it doesn't reward something other than this, but I felt like judging in this sort of post-COVID era really um, felt like it was rewarding um, the combination of the two things, like how well um, both battery and front ensemble writing was, was married, like how they enhanced each other. Um, and, all, and almost to the point where, you know, when you hear the battery by itself, it sounds fine. When you hear the front ensemble by itself, it sounds fine. But you really do need to hear it together in order for it to, to make sense. Um, and I know that in, you know, in last season, uh, the books were so inter intertwined, you know, there was this, there was just a tiny bit of space to get in there with each other. Um, and, um, and I think other groups have benefited from that as well. Like, like Blue Coats this year had a book, even though they didn't win, they were up there. Yeah. Um, that really, it's like, it almost... Not that it didn't make sense, but well, it, let's be honest. When we were listening to the separately, we're just like, oh, okay. But then when you hear yeah. it together, it was like, like you were like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then when you hear it with the horn line, it's a whole other thing. Yeah, you know, when you hear it on the field, it's a whole other thing. And and uh, I think that should be celebrated. Yeah, you know, because it is like you know the full the full percussion package, the full presentation, not just one specific aspect of it. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, it's it's what the way the judging is set up now with the, the, the judge has the box they can be in in the front of the field, you know, 70, 80% of your exposure is all front ensemble, you know, so uh, that's requiring the people are responsible for running front ensemble music that you have to get more content in the show, but being that you're kind of sampling everything up front now, it puts a lot more pressure on the arrangers that you have to write better music. You can't just write drumline music used to be way less musical. It used to just kind of be this thing that would happen on its own that would hopefully line up. Now it has to line up. You know, everything has to, it, it's, it's put a lot of pressure on everybody. So you have to write great music. That's like step one. And if you miss on that, you're not competitive. Josh, that's a really interesting point that about the impact of that rule change is you can't listen to the battery by itself because while you are in your box listening to the battery, the front ensemble's right there. You know, so it can't just be like a, this is just there. I mean, unless the front ensemble is doing, you know, not doing very much. But so the fact that you can't go out onto the field and the front ensemble is 50 feet away from you, you know, um, that's a really, that's a really interesting point. I hadn't thought of that yeah, before. Yeah. Hey, real quick, getting back to the X thing, talking about, you know, you guys have to rehearse inside. Have you ever thought of like early season, Rhythm X, SoCal Tour? <laughs> You know, one uh, for the, for the WGI Power Regional, maybe you know. So, I probably shouldn't talk about it, but I'll talk about it. We we there has been a small discussion about Rhythm X going to California for the 2026 season. Yes, uh, just for a regional, no one freak out. But we we tried to do it a couple of years ago, and we're looking more into it as a possibility. And now the agreement is for those of you guys listening, all those West Coast groups, we want you all at the same regional. <laughs> So let, let's let's load up a regional, but it's it's something that we've talked about. We, it's good for us exposure wise. I mean, if you want to if you want to beat the best, you better go compete against the best. And um, 
also just kind of a, a friendly gesture. We know that financially they're every year coming to, coming to see us and coming to our backyard and just be kind of a nice thing if we can work it out. Now, logistically, it's a nightmare, um, you know, but it has, it, we've talked about it a couple of times in the past, loading up one of those West Coast regionals and see if we can do like a little West Coast championships, something, and then come back to Dayton. I'm sure if you would talk to like some of the SEPA guys, they'd help you like arrange it. Yeah. It's either they'll help you or be like, no, we don't want you out here. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, ideally we'd be able to come out there on like, you know, on, on we'd be out there for a week. Yeah. So we would just rehearse for a week. Yeah. And then the last weekend is the, the big regional. Is it the San Bernardino? Is that the big one Yeah. yeah. out there? Like if we can all just agree, like, Hey, we're all going to that regional and just kind of see what that, I, mean, I think just, that'd be super fun. Just as long as WGI, because funny, funny enough, Josh, that particular regional, the lot has been awful. It's been like the worst lot. It's just been really small. Like, yeah. like, like, like physically, it was at Long Beach State, and then it was at Cal State Fullerton, and both lots, uh, just in terms of size, everybody was right on top of each other, and it was horrible. That was just the last two years, um, but if that can get figured out. That would be amazing, yeah. you know. Yeah, what what a fun regional that would be. Yeah, if it's a San Mar- Cal State San Bernardino, that's not bad. But it's like, was it not not twenty twenty four twenty twenty three when it was at Long Beach? Yeah, we get there and it's like, yeah, you get like three parking spaces to warm up in, and, and it was like, and and you have groups parking, you have groups right next to you, yes, instead of being sort of offset yeah. or like right behind you. Um, and so when that was over, I'm like, all right, well, at least next year will be better. And then, okay, we go to, all right, Cal State Fullerton, we go, and it's like, nope, no. It's a one, one parking, little parking lot for everybody to warm up in. Meanwhile, like right next to it, there's a big parking lot that nobody's using. And, but, but they got to pay rental on the parking lot. Right. You're paying for space. Do you guys take, does Rhythmix take small trips during your season? Like, like I don't know, like how far away. No, most of the shows, yeah, most of the shows for us are within like a, 30 minute drive. Um, and then we do, we'll do the Cincinnati regional, um, which is a 50 minute drive. And then in the, we didn't last year, but we normally do the Indianapolis regional, which is like a two hour drive. Two okay. hour. Yeah. Yeah. That's like for us, that's like yeah. driving down to Temecula or something yeah. like that. Hey, oh, so, so real quick, getting back to the summertime for next year, is it safe to say we can expect to see you in like some Kelly green, swag t-shirts or i don't know can you talk about that at all yeah yeah uh yeah i'll be wearing green next year um i'm coming back come back to cavaliers um you know pretty much the whole team whole percussion team's intact um i'm moving into uh i'll be taking over the battery arranging and uh lee allman will be taking over the front ensemble arranging but the um the ed staff is uh we, we lost a couple people to some other places but near a hundred percent retention. So we're all systems go. Cool. That's, that's great to hear. We really like, we really enjoy what you guys do there. Thanks. You know, excuse my ignorance, but what does, uh, what are Josh Bricky beats? Like what, if, if you had, <laughs> if you could, if you could, and maybe we'll get into it when we, when we get more into like the past and like the era you came up in and stuff like that. But if, um, if you had to describe like, like, in terms of like strong influences or, or what you really like, what sort of tickles you pushes your buttons in the right way with regards to like what you want your music to sound like. Um, or even if, is there, is there something you've arranged before that the, that we and our audience can go to and say, this is, this is sort of like quintessentially like what, what your music sounds like. Sure. Um, well, if you watched Cavaliers in 2024, there was a large percentage of that was my writing. Um, um, If you watch Rhythm X, um, let's say maybe starting in 2022, the Nirvana show, um, I've, there's little samples of my writing and all in, in those shows. Um, Yeah. That me and Tim Jackson have a really good working relationship with, with the writing. Um, It's, it's his book, but I get little, little snippets here and there. Um, so there's stuff sprinkled over. As far as like my influences and what my writing kind of sounds like, I was heavily my idol growing up was Tom Monks. I I, I worshipped uh, the '90s, early 2000s cadets. 
Um, that was kind of how I grew up drumming. Um, I, I joke with Tom all the time that I can, I can probably play more of his music than he can. Um, I've just learned everything. Uh, so I was, I'm heavily influenced by uh, what I, it's kind of a hybrid. My first year, the, the year that I marched at Crown, that was um, Paul Rennick's team. Um, so Jeff Queen was caption head, Paul did the writing. So heavily influenced by his style as well. So it's kind of, it's kind of this unique marriage between what I would call the Rennick style and it's like old school cadets, like Tom Monk's days. So it's uh, kind of a hybrid of those two, but um, I like to think it's my, it's my own style, but I mean, everybody's influenced by, you know, how you were raised and what you learned to love playing. So there's influences for sure, but that's kind of summing it up. So when you go back to, and this is a good segue in, into going back, um, when you go back to being a fan of cadets, like you said, in, in the nineties and early two thousands, how hard was it? Cause I don't, I don't know what it was like to actually like, cause we had to listen to audio cassettes and then try to like, you know, we had one videotape of like, okay, I think that's what the sticking is. How hard was it to actually like, um, learn the beats and, uh, brutal <laughs> um well oh boy I'm, I'm, I'm gonna date myself pretty heavy here there used to be two websites one was called drummers heaven yeah, yeah. and um they on that website people would upload like pictures of handwritten music so i i learned a lot of it from there um there was another one i want to say it was called like drummers world i think it was it was kind of the same thing where like you'd have some audio clips but I used to get on like LimeWire and I would um, just. <laughs> now you're really dating yourself. Yeah. I would just download uh, anything that said Cadets of Bergen County on it. And so I would learn the music, but I didn't know what any of the stickings were. So I would just make up my own, but the rhythms were correct. And then throughout time, I, I ended up marching with some guys at March Cadets when I was in high school uh, in, an, in, in an indoor line. And I would say, hey, I know what, teach me what that sticking is. So it was, it probably took, you know, it would take you nowadays, you go find a piece of music and you can learn it in an hour, but I had to learn what it sounded like. And then I had to meet somebody that marched in the line to teach me the sticking. So it was a long process. 